I became the president of MAP um, earlier this year uh, and was determined to make a very early visit to Gaza, which is where we spend rather more than half our resources in supporting the development of health services uh, for the Palestinian people. Tell me, um, you used to have a house here? It isn't, of course, the first visit that I've made to Gaza. Uh, I came here three times when I was a European commissioner. Once, for example, uh, to agree the funding of the airport, which was subsequently um, plowed up by the Israeli Defense Forces. Also, with Anna Lindt, the uh, former Swedish foreign minister, um, we spent two days here together looking at uh, the possibilities of development in Gaza and then, alas, uh, she was murdered shortly afterwards in Stockholm. Those visits were, of course, before the Second Intifada and before the immoral, um, illegal and uh, ineffective uh, blockade or siege uh, of Gaza, which has been in place since 2007. MAP is determined to work with, with others here in Gaza uh, to uh, improve the health facilities um, right across the community. I've seen several examples of that during the two days I've spent here. Uh, for example, uh, I went to the Shifa Hospital and saw several projects that we've been uh, working on with uh, the local community there. This morning I was uh, visiting a disability project uh, in Rafa uh, and I've just seen the neonatal intensive care unit here uh, and the first babies uh, who've be, whose lives have been saved by what is being done by doctors in Gaza with the assistance of uh, DFID, the British Development Agency, MAP and others. It's a particularly important project because there are 50,000 uh, births in Gaza every year. Uh, about 11,000 women who give birth do so with some complications and therefore to provide a neonatal intensive care unit here in the north of Gaza is exceptionally important. It's a unit which will save children's lives. But you have to ask the question, what are we saving their lives for? We know that uh, many of the problems faced by the health service are a direct result uh, of the blockade of uh, what Mr. Ging has called the medieval siege of Gaza. The real solutions to the problems which the health service faces could only be dealt with by an end to the blockade of Gaza uh, and the acceptance by all the parties concerned that the only way forward is through reconciliation and a real commitment to peace and development. Challenges because it contains the emergency department at the first floor and this is a very tight area. Uh, I'm very pleased that the European Union's uh, High Representative for Foreign and Security Policy made a second visit uh, to Gaza yesterday and was so clear herself about the importance of not only lifting the blockade of goods coming in, but of lifting the blockade on goods coming out. When I was here previously, uh, I was able to see uh, some examples of manufacturing of export industries, which alas have been choked off, which has nothing to do with security and everything to do with collective punishment. There are legitimate security interests uh, which uh, all countries, including Israel, uh, want to uh, safeguard. But uh, what we're seeing around Gaza has, has little to do with that. After this visit, uh, I can assure you that I'll continue to commit uh, MAP to the work we've been doing for 25 years now uh, for Palestinian communities. Uh, and I'll also continue to press the European Union uh, to take a more a positive and assertive position in pressing for peace and prosperity uh, in the region. Thank you very much.